Hey, it's Dean here, and I want to share with you some key things. If you're thinking about starting a business, these are some key things that I think will help you be successful in your first 100 days. Just before I go into the video, please like and comment and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us get seen across the platform. So if you get some value from this video, please return the favor, like, comment, subscribe. When you're starting a business, whether you're starting it because you got laid off, whether you're starting it because you got a great idea, there are some really key things that you need to kind of grab hold of and understand in those first early days to make sure you hit the ground running. I'm sure lots of people will come with these big grandiose things that you should be doing, but actually most people start businesses with zero money or with a little bit of money that they've got themselves. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. They just start with what they've got. So I'm gonna share with you uh, three simple things that you can do that will help you make sure that your first 100 days are the best they can be. So number one, have a clear understanding of who you're trying to sell your product or service to. Startups waste a lot of time trying to sell to the wrong people. If you've got a product, service or solution and you're looking to get that out into the marketplace, really kind of map out who it is that you're trying to sell to. In other words, when you look at your product and the the advantages of owning your product or purchasing your product has for a customer, Who gets the most benefit from it? Think about all the different customers you can think of, mums, dads, old people, young people, business people, uh, accountants, whoever they are, and think about who gets the most benefit out of it and go for your biggest benefit first and target the audience where you can add the biggest benefit. Make sure that your wording, your advertising, any of your messaging is geared around them because in the first 100 days, you want to make the biggest impact on your business to give you the momentum to keep going. Momentum comes from selling things, in other words, making a profit, earning money, but it also comes from here and it comes from here. If you're not motivated here and here, you will your business will fizzle out before it ever gets past its first 100 days. So it's really important that you sell to the people you can give the most benefit to first. Number two, Don't obsess about building a website. Here it is, everybody. The world's greatest website. A lot of people go, oh, you need a website and all this kind of stuff. When you start a business, you need a landing page maximum. And the reason I say this is because a website is a mammoth project. And in your first few weeks and months, You don't have the first idea of how to write, produce and put together a website because everything that you know right now will change as you launch into the market. So if you start building a website now, one, it will take you forever and it won't look right. You won't be happy with it. You won't be satisfied with it. Number two reason you shouldn't do it is it will take up a lot of your mental energy and your mental energy needs to be focused on I've got a product, let's get it out there. So a very simple landing page that validates who you are, some ways to reach you, a bit of information about the product. If it's e-commerce, obviously a way to buy the product, but just one page, one simple page that says, this is who we are, this is what we can do, done. Don't focus and waste your time on a website in your first few weeks and months. Final tip, when you're reaching out to people, Be very careful about saying you're a startup. What Brushfire Media does is a little different. We started in our dorm room at Oswego College four years ago as a way to seamlessly fuse branded integrations with content creators such as yourselves. What does any of that mean? Now, it's really hip and trendy to be a startup, and you might think that's cool. But some customers will be worried about whether you're going to be around for the long term, whether this product's any good. Are you just trying to scam them? Don't make being a startup a selling point. Just say who you are. This is what you do. Be very, very clear. But don't obsess about this whole startup culture. Customers just want a product that does the job, saves them time, money, or gives them a benefit. They don't care whether you're a startup. They don't care whether you're a 500-year-old company. They want to know that their product is good and does the job. Be confident. Don't undersell yourself because you're nervous about your business. Don't over promise and under deliver, but make sure that you are certain in that you want to give this product to the customer and this product is amazing. Sometimes our 
lack of confidence because we're starting a new venture, we're starting a new business, we can actually, in our language, push that through to the customer and it actually harms our sales. So be really clear that this is a great product. People love it. Don't go over the top. But at the same time, don't undersell yourself. These things can kind of preoccupy us. And when we approach new customers, they kind of come out in our conversation and we actually undermine the very sales pitch we're trying to make. You don't need to go all nuts and pretend to be corporate or anything like that, but really hold your language in check when you're approaching customers, particularly if you have to sell the product. If it's not just like, you know, an online store or uh, something like that. if you have to sell the product, if you have to make calls or or reach out to people to sell it, don't use language that would undermine people's confidence in you. Uh, and that's really important is that customers want confidence when they're buying a product. Even if you offer a 30 day guarantee with your product, if you undermine your sales pitch with negative language, they will still not find any reassurance in any form of guarantee money back thing because you have to give customers confidence. Now, that doesn't mean bullshitting people. It means telling people confidently and them reading you and seeing that you're confident in your own business. And it's really important that you're confident in your business in the first 100 days. Those 100 days starting a business and getting out into the marketplace are hard work. And you have to be committed to push through all of those challenges, all of those frustrations. And yes, sometimes you're going to feel like this should not be this hard. It is that that hard. You have to push and push and push. And it's like pushing like a snowball or a rock up a hill till you reach the top. And then it catches momentum and rolls down the other side and gathers pace and momentum. You have to create that momentum. So in your first 100 days, your key role is to get momentum behind your product, not all the other stuff that might you might think is important and long term will be important. But initially, what you need to do is build momentum behind your product, which means going after the people you can give the most benefit to first, not getting bogged down in complex marketing, like building websites, keep it simple at the start. And then finally, being confident and believing in what you're saying. Don't let your nervousness about your startup and whether it'll be successful and all that kind of stuff come through in your communication that harms your sales and potential new customers decision to buy. If you've liked this video, please do subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching the channel. There's some other videos you can watch uh, all about helping you grow your business, help you think a bit differently so that you can grow your business successfully. Uh, thanks for watching.